In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me. A sinner. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called servant. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Alleluia. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Alleluia. Shout for joy. full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Alleluia. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Alleluia. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie, Kyrie, eleison. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Kyrie, Kyrie, Eleison. Help, save, comfort, and defend.
defend us, gracious Lord. Kyrie, Kyrie, Eleison. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson for the third Sunday of Easter is written in the book of the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 34. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and all the settlements of the land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and there they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. But the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is written in the first letter of St. Peter, chapter 2. To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. When they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Alleluia. was known to them in the breaking of the bread. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Alleluia. 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 The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. Glory be to you, O Lord. The words of Jesus. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep, so when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. There are so many shepherd images of God in the Bible. There's the shepherd walking with his sheep, following behind him, leading him them through green pastures, guiding them up to a gently flowing stream, 
where they can drink and quench their thirst. There's the image of Jesus feeding his little lambs. The image of Jesus comforting his sheep, carrying the little ones in his arms. The image of the shepherd leaving the 99 to go out searching for one lost sheep that had strayed, searching until he finds it, and when he does, comes home carrying it on his arms over his shoulders, rejoicing. But there is no shepherd image that is quite as striking as the one in our gospel for today. And that is the image of a bloody shepherd. This is the shepherd who places himself between the sheep and the wolf. It's the shepherd who takes his stand, even when the hired hands see the wolf coming and they run away to save their skin, leaving the sheep to be attacked and slaughtered. But the good shepherd doesn't run away. He stays. He confronts the wolf, but he doesn't fight it off. Instead, what this shepherd does is he opens his arms and he makes himself the wolf's target. The wolf pounces on him, but he embraces it. He allows the wolf to injure him, to gore him, to eat him alive. There's blood everywhere. He lays down his life for the sheep. And after the shepherd lays down his life for the sheep, then he stands up again. That's what the word resurrection means, to stand up again. And then he stands up, he stands up still bloody, but no longer bleeding. He's still scarred, but no longer injured, having died, but no longer dead. The wolf is still there, threatening the sheep until the very last day of planet Earth's existence. But the good shepherd is still there too, standing forever between the sheep and the wolf. This image, this image of a bloody shepherd is the image that saves. This is the image that comforts the sheep more than any other. This is the image that creates faith in the shepherd and it brings the sheep into his flock. It's the image that creates Christians. Without this image of the bloody shepherd, the words of Psalm 23 would ring hollow. For all the people in the world who who just love the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, without believing in Jesus as their bloody shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep, they're They're fooling themselves. The Lord is not their shepherd. If you don't want the bloody shepherd, Jesus, for your shepherd, if the blood on his clothes, if the scars in his hands and his side are repulsive to you, then then the Lord is not your shepherd. Because the bloody shepherd is Jesus. The good shepherd is the bloody shepherd. Well, who or what then is is the wolf? Who or what seeks to devour you? There are many wolves out there. The devil himself is one of them. Just think what pleasure, what, what comfort or blessing he could dangle in front of your sheep eyes just to get you to look somewhere else away from your shepherd and wander off. On the other hand, what tragedy or or evil or suffering could he send your way to turn your love for Jesus into hatred and bitterness? Or what sin or fault of your neighbor can he hold before your eyes so that you're so consumed with anger and apathy towards your neighbor that your shepherd is no longer in view? Who or what is the wolf that threatens? It's also the world. With its empty morality and its hollow philosophy, it's it's the world that hates the light of truth. 
because its own deeds are evil, and so it threatens your family or threatens your career. It laughs at you and rejects you for being a Christian for following Jesus. Who or what is the wolf that threatens you, the sheep? It's false teachers who darken the shepherd's words with their lies that sound so sweet. It's temptation, it's sin, it's death. And while you're busy looking around and focusing on all of these wolves that are all around you, what you might not realize is that the wolf is also you. You. Your sinful nature is your own worst enemy. That's what separated you from God in the first place. That's what made you an object of God's wrath. And it's always still there, always dragging you away from God, dragging you off to serve yourself, to live for yourself, to love only those who love you, and care only for those who care for you as you want to be cared for. It's your sinful nature that can turn you into a wolf towards your fellow Christian. To treat them so poorly, to injure them so badly that they'll never want to know another Christian or step foot in another Christian church as long as they live. How many wolves are there around, gathering, circling? You can't even see them. But your shepherd can. And who that should be protecting you has let you down? A parent? A relative? A teacher? A pastor? The Good Shepherd isn't like any of them. For even if all of your protectors and guardians run away, the Good Shepherd never will. He puts himself in the way and he shields you with his arms, with his body, with his blood. All of your enemies... Everything that threatened you, including the wrath of God itself, all of that fell upon your good shepherd as he intervened between you and the wolf. He opened up his arms on the cross and laid down his life for you. The bloody image of Jesus dying on the cross is your shield and your protection from any and every will, from sin and death and the devil, from fear and depression, from everything, everything that seeks to harm you. The bloody good shepherd lays down his life, but then stands up again on the third day and keeps fighting. Only this time he can't ever die again. He comes back to life to keep on shepherding you forever. It's this good shepherd that has actually brought you here today. For he gathers his sheep around himself in order to place himself between the wolf and you. Because this shepherd, this good shepherd, is here in his gospel to warn the impenitent so that they do not die eternally. He's here in his gospel forgiving the sorrowful, comforting the sad, carrying the weak. See, Jesus calls his sheep together, gathers them so that he might serve them, that they might be served by him, the good shepherd, to hear his words, to be led by his teachings, to be fed by his life, by his body, by his blood. Jesus knows, Jesus knows how hard, how scary it is to face the wolf. But see, his sheep are not the ones who have to face the wolf. They wouldn't stand a chance. The sheep aren't the ones who have to be brave against sin and death and the devil. They are no match for him. The sheep are too dumb even to see the the wolf coming until it's too late. No. No, the shepherd is the brave one. 
He's the one who does the fighting, and his blood-stained body proves that he will fight for you and he will never give up. He knows his sheep. He knows where they are vulnerable and he knows how to protect them. So don't pretend that you're strong or that you'll need to be strong enough to stand against the wolf. Your shepherd does that for you. Trust in your shepherd. Listen to your shepherd. Stay with your shepherd. He won't leave you vulnerable. Even when he goes out looking for the lo- his lost sheep. For there are still lost sheep in the world that he has to find with his word and call into his flock. Some of them, some of them are Christians who have strayed away from his work, from his word, and therefore from his kingdom. Others have never yet heard the shepherd's voice. But they will. They still don't know the image of the shepherd who bloodied himself in order to protect his sheep from the wolves. But when they hear it, they will believe. Not everyone will believe, but some will. And it won't take some kind of gimmicks or or tricks or seduction to bring them into Jesus' flock. Just the message of this bloody shepherd. That's all it ever takes. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord isn't your shepherd unless the Lord that you mean, the Lord that you believe in, the Lord that you follow in faith, is this bloody shepherd, Lord Jesus, who laid down his life for the sheep and took it up again. And if he is the Lord that you call on, that you call your shepherd, then you shall want for nothing. But if you don't have a healthy body, you lack nothing. You don't have a happy marriage or friends or money or security. You lack nothing. He gives you all you need. He knows what you need before the thought even enters your mind. And he has given you all good things. Even his own body thrown between you and the wolf. Even his own flesh as food and his blood as drink. He is a good shepherd. He is the good shepherd. Stained in his own blood, but victorious. Those who trust in him have nothing to fear from any wolf. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now join in confessing the Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the good shepherd of Israel, who has sought out his sheep and gathered us with them into one flock, would keep us always in his fold and guard us from every wolf and snare. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church, that God would send faithful shepherds to care for his flock here and scattered throughout the world that he would keep them devoted to Christ and his truth, and so turn them in dutiful service toward his people, that God would spare us from hirelings who serve ego, belly, or the world's doctrines, and that he would give discerning ears to his sheep to listen for the voice of Christ, our good shepherd. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of good government, that as the paschal lamb has wrought peace between God and man, so he would grant peace and good days also to our citizens and between the nations of the world, and that we and all our neighbors may lead quiet lives in godly contentment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for our risen Christ, the first fruits from the dead, who has secured forgiveness for our troubled consciences, that he would also bless with temporal health those who suffer and that he would grant us aid not only in this moment, but even more so true immortal health in the world to come. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the Holy Communion today, that our Good Shepherd would calm our fears in this valley of the shadow of death through the Holy Table here prepared in the presence of our enemies, that he would give us repentance and an increase of faith and that in every tribulation or besetting sin, he would lead us to find comfort and strength in the overflowing mercy given us in this sacrament. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, out of fatherly goodness, you have remembered us poor, miserable sinners and given your beloved Son to be our shepherd, not only to nourish us by his word, but also to defend us from sin, death, and the devil. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that even as this shepherd knows us and helps us in every affliction, we also may know him, trust him, seek help and comfort in him, heartily obey his voice, and obtain eternal salvation. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God. And we praise you especially on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Almighty God, endless is your mercy and eternal is your reign. Out of love you created us and everything which exists. In mercy you preserved the church in Noah's day with a flood. In grace you promised to bless us through Abraham's seed. With patience you protected that seed through the judges and kings of Israel. 
in faithfulness, you repeated your promises through the prophets. And when the time had fully come, you sent your son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law with a perfect and sufficient sacrifice, which paid the price for the sins of the entire world. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, gracious Lord, we bow before you in thankfulness for your many and varied gifts, for Christ's redemptive death, his victorious resurrection, his ascension promises, and his powerful reign at your right hand. Bolstered by your endless grace and Pentecost spirit, we eagerly await his glorious return. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
O God the Father, source of all goodness, in your loving kindness you sent your Son to share our humanity. We thank you that through him you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We also pray that you will not forsake us, but will rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit so that we willingly serve you day after day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. May be seated. This morning we have our quarterly congregational meeting. You are all invited to, to stay and hear an update on our congregation's ministry. Don't think there's much, hardly anything on the agenda, so it shouldn't take long. Um, afterwards, we have a, a